Hello, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Submarines have a long history throughout the United States. Starting with what is now referred to as the Turtle, the first submarine was invented by Yale graduate David Bushnell. The submarine provided colonists with a secret weapon against the English forces during the American Revolution. Unlike what many see as submarines today, the Turtle was a one-man wooden craft that relied upon human-powered hand crank and foot treadle. However, it was able to go undetected while approaching enemy ships. As of April 1900, the United States acquired its first modern submarine named the USS Holland, or SS-1. It was the first submarine officially commissioned by the United States Navy. I became a submariner based on watching a TV program in the early 60s called The Silent Service. And it was all about submarines during World War II. And it just fascinated me. The dangers they went through, uh, what they did, and then it, it made me to start read up on what the submarine force did in World War II. And when it was time before I could enlist with my dad's permission, uh, I did, and I joined the submarine force. Today, submarines are an integral part of the United States Navy. Before a crew may go out to sea, however, there are some tests a submarine must go through. In order for a submarine to carry and use warshot tactical harpoon missiles, the ships must first take and pass Encapsulated Harpoon Certification Training Vehicle Testing, or EHCTV testing. According to the Navy, the Harpoon system is a lethal, all-weather, anti-ship capability. This allows submarines to shoot targets at a long range. Four. Thanks to the lethality of their harpoons, as well as their ability to act undetected, submarines are essential for many missions. Submarines can control their buoyancy, which means that crew members can decide when it wants to go underwater or stay above water as needed. As well as being able to control buoyancy, submarines have a myriad of important features to go along with them. An example of this is a submarine's periscope and radar system. Radars are able to detect another submarine's periscope through a careful surface search. The radars detect and pinpoint the periscope to determine and classify the object that the radar detects. A periscope is a type of instrument to help those inside of a submarine navigate and observe surroundings, all with the hopes of staying undercover. The conning tower is a raised platform on the submarine that is often armored. The highest point of the tower is the bridge which is typically used for surface navigation and signaling. This is similar to other ships which also have a bridge used to control the ship. Another important part of a submarine is the weapons themselves. Submarines may carry a dozen or more torpedoes at a time, which they often use in various forms of warfare to sink other ships. In its most basic form, torpedoes are launched by an underwater tube filling with water, flooding the tube, and a pressurized system shoots it out.
Modern-day torpedoes come with a safety mechanism to prevent accidental torpedo activation. Submarines may participate in important training when not out on a mission. Recently, submarines from NATO countries took part in Dynamic Mongoose, an advanced anti-submarine warfare exercise. Taking place in June of 2022, the maritime exercise was located in the North Atlantic region. Dynamic Mongoose is a high-end, deep-water ASW exercise taking place in the waters of Iceland uh, over the next couple of weeks. According to the Navy, submarines from France, Germany, Norway, the United Kingdom and the United States under NATO Submarine Command joined surface ships from Canada, Norway, the United Kingdom and the United States. The goal of this exercise was to provide the participants with what the Navy deems as realistic, challenging and complex warfare training to enhance proficiency in anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare disciplines. It's held annually in the Norwegian Sea. Back in 2016, NATO held a similar operation called Dynamic Manta. Taking place in the Ionian Sea, the training involved extreme cooperation between air, surface and subsurface crew members. Not only do the team members develop morale and teamwork, but these training missions help them to strategize and improve their knowledge of operations. Along with submarines and other forms of ships, there is another important type of craft when it comes to anti-submarine warfare. Helicopters play a specific role during this type of warfare, including flying courses separate from ships. This allows the helicopters to send sonar information about where enemy vessels are located. Helicopters are also quickly able to deploy from nearly all types of water vessels, while being out of range from water-based attacks such as torpedoes. When needed, helicopters are excellent options for search and rescue tasks as well. However, in times of both war and peace, the Navy must continue to adapt. Recently, the Navy took a step towards adaption when claiming that the unmanned surface vessel Division 1 will be expediting what they refer to as the integration of unmanned surface vessels. Unmanned surface vessels, sometimes referred to as the unmanned surface vehicles, are boats or ships that are operated autonomously. As of May 16, the Navy claims it is still trying to decide how to best integrate these unmanned surface vessels into the Navy. but there are many options. Most notably, USVs are often used for mine hunting. This mitigates the risk of injury to those aboard a ship. During Exercise Citadel Shield Solid Curtain 2020, Textron Systems demonstrated its common unmanned surface vehicle during a force protection scenario at Naval Station Norfolk. A fourth generation CUSV, the vessel can play several critical roles, including minesweeping and neutralization, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, harbor security and more. Thanks to the technology, it is able to keep personnel out of harm's way. The CUSV is the common unmanned surface vehicle that's currently being used by the Navy in a mine-countermine mission. It's done in LCS. 
What it would be used for is an anti-terrorism force protection mission. Unmanned underwater vehicles do a similar job to unmanned surface vehicles when it comes to mine surveillance. They provide varying strategic opportunities for many forms of maritime warfare, including mine detection and neutralization, intelligence, surveillance, and anti-submarine warfare. Divided into two main categories, remotely operated underwater vehicles and autonomous underwater vehicles, the UUVs are sometimes known as underwater drones. These vehicles can operate underwater without a human inside. While underwater, these vehicles are perfect for scouting out underwater minefields and possibly disarming them. Though divers are still needed for some situations, the usage and variety of unmanned water vehicles allow the need for specialized underwater dive teams to be reduced. Especially when it comes to things such as explosive ordnance disposal, which also limits personnel injuries. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.